Okay, so hey guys, my name is Quinston and today we are going to explore the inner workings of the Bitonic Sword and the code that enables it. But before we get into the video, I would like to encourage you to subscribe to the channel uh, as I've been putting out a lot of videos recently and I think those videos will be very helpful uh, in your journey as an elite programmer. And uh, so yeah, so thank you and uh, let's begin. So the Bitonic Sword is a parallel comparison based sorting algorithm uh, which does big O of n log n comparisons. Uh, it is also called as a Bitonic merge sort, which is very interesting actually. So the Bitonic sort is based on the concept of converting a given sequence into a Bitonic sequence. Now, what in the world is a Bitonic sequence in the first place? Let's check it out. So a Bitonic sequence is a sequence of numbers in which the values of the numbers in the first half are strictly increasing and the values of the numbers in the second half are strictly decreasing. Basically, the values when you move from uh, left to right, they grow and then they basically they dip down. They don't grow anymore. They descend actually. An example of this would be uh, the sequence. Uh, let me just write that sequence down. It is uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then you have 5, 3, 2, and 1. So if you can observe in this sequence, the values are initially growing and then the values are you know, coming down. Um, so in this example, the values of the elements increases from you know, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then decreases from 5, 3, 2, and 1. It is almost like looking at a gradient, right? It is almost like you're looking at a gradient where uh, you know, the gradient goes up in value and then comes down in value. Uh, and also one more thing is that uh, the part where the reversal happens, the part where the reversal happens, that is called as the bitonic point. So where the behavior of the sequence changes from left to right, that part is called as the bitonic point in a bitonic sequence. Also, the bitonic uh, sequence or the bitonic sort only works on, um, on sequences that have a length of the power of two. So for example, a bitonic sequence will only work on sequences of length uh, 4, 8, 16, 32, 128, which are of the power of two. That is very important. So if you have a, a sequence of length 33, it's not going to work. So yeah, it's not going to work. So a sequence which is sorted in the increasing order is also bitonic. Now you might be wondering why. The reason is that the descending part of the array is considered as empty. So a bitonic sequence should contain both the increasing part and the decreasing part. But if the decreasing part is empty, it is still considered as a bitonic sequence. Similarly, if the increasing part is empty and the decreasing part exists, even then it is considered as a bitonic, uh, you know, a bitonic sequence. That is very interesting and that is what we will also use. So that is a concept we will use to convert our sequence into a bitonic sequence. So before stating the steps of the algorithm, one idea that we need to project is what is, uh, you know, what is the smallest a bitonic sequence that you can create. Uh, let's think about this for a while, okay? So going off the definition of the bitonic sequence, you might assume that the that the smallest bitonic sequence that can be created is of four elements. Like, you know, the first two will be increasing and the next two will be decreasing. But you would be making a grave mistake in that case because what happens is we discussed a concept earlier uh, which uh, in which we, we talked about the fact that even an, a purely increasing array is also bitonic, which means that even if you have two elements, let's say you have the elements three and seven. Now three and seven are, are purely increasing elements, right? They're increasing three and seven consecutive, they're increasing. Do they form a bitonic sequence? Of course they do. By, by definition, they form a bitonic sequence. So what happens is when three and seven together form a bitonic sequence, now imagine swapping them. So seven and three. Now seven and three are a decreasing, a purely decreasing sequence. Do they form a bitonic sequence? Yes, they do. And that is the reason the smallest bitonic sequence that you can create is of, um, you know, is, is, is of two consecutive elements. Any two random consecutive elements are bitonic. Imagine that, that's, that's crazy. Now this realization is very important as this is where we will start our uh, execution of the program from. So let's take an example so that we have a better idea of how this entire thing works. And I'll be using the pad, uh, my tablet to you know, record this. So the elements that we're gonna deal with are three, seven, four, eight, six, two, one. So this was the most common, um, you know, 
sequence that was being used everywhere on the internet to illustrate the bitonic sequence or the bitonic sort so i thought it would be a good idea to you know use the same so let's let's just check that out going off the principle um uh, you know the principle that we just previously realized uh with the size of the bitonic sequence being eight so the size of this bitonic sequence is eight uh so here how many bitonic sequences exist inside this particular array so there are about this is a bitonic sequence this is a bitonic sequence this is a bitonic sequence and this is a bitonic, a bitonic sequence so three seven four eight six two one five all of them are bitonic sequences in their own right correct because there are four of them the size of the current bitonic sequence so the current bitonic sequence is of size two so the current bitonic sequence is of size two this is very important um now think about this we did not have to perform any operations to get to this point none we had to perform zero operations to get to this point this is there by default now how do you start the algorithm let's let's actually begin and start the algorithm so how do you know uh, what is the first step so the first step is basically figuring out what is the bitonic sequence that you need to create so the way this works is you have a smaller bitonic sequence that is one stage you create a new stage or move the next stage by increasing the bitonic sequence within uh, the same sequence so here in this particular array we have a bitonic sequence of size 2 so the bitonic sequence that we need to create in the next stage is of size 4 which is double of the previous one imagine that it's double so if you have the current bitonic sequence of size 2 that you can see over here the next bitonic sequence that we need to create is of size 4 so let's do that so the next bitonic sequence that we need to create is of size 4 which is 2 times you know 2 4 um, so we will need to create a bitonic sequence of this part over here and a bitonic sequence of this part over here now why is that so the sequence contains eight elements from here we consider four elements each and create two groups because you know we can't consider eight elements in the same sequence that doesn't work out the, the, the way it would have um so at the end of this cycle at the end of this stage what we will have is two bitonic sequences in our main sequence how do we form these sequences we use two tools namely to form these sequences and the first one is a comparison distance and the second one is direction so the comparison distance is the distance between the two elements that we are going to compare and the direction is the order in which these elements are supposed to be to to exist so let's say you have an arrow pointing in this direction then whatever direction the arrow is pointing in the elements should increase in that direction if the element is pointing in the opposite direction the elements should increase in the opposite direction it's you, you, you figure it out in the example don't worry about that so uh, if the elements are not arranged in the correct order in sync with the direction those elements need to be swapped those elements need to be swapped the direction is marked with an arrow okay the direction is marked with an arrow as I just, as I just told you and the distance is marked with the length of the arrow so, so the distance is basically uh, between two points where the arrow begins and where the arrow ends that whole length is a distance so you know this could be an arrow for example if you have something like this this is an arrow the this is a distance of the entire uh, arrow so there are two the distance is two basically that's how it works okay so let me just uh now let's go deeper and see exactly how this is implemented uh the first group contains the elements three seven uh, four eight now we have to convert this into a bitonic sequence now we need to find the comparison distance first so the distance of the comparison distance is usually half the length of the existing bitonic sequence so what is the existing bitonic sequence? What is the length of the current bitonic sequence? As you can see clearly, the length of the current bitonic sequence is 2. So if the length of the current bitonic sequence is 2, then halving it will give us a value of 1. So the comparison distance is equal to 1 at this current position. So we should compare elements which are at a distance of 1 and check if they are in the correct you know, order or not. Now to make this easier on our brains, um, also, one more thing is that if you have a bitonic sequence, the bitonic sequence should be increasing in the first half simplistically and decreasing in the second half simplistically. So basically what happens is there is no need for halving or there is no rule in the bitonic uh, lore where you have to have elements equally you know, increasing and equally decreasing. That, that's not mentioned anywhere as that's a, I, I don't know if that's a rule. 
But for simplicity, we are going to consider halving, uh, halving <laughs> the sequence so that we can have equal amounts of uh, increasing elements and equal amounts of decreasing elements. And that is possible because the Bytoni sequence is only implemented on, on, on sequences that have um, an order of power 2. They're even, basically. So we, we split the group over here and we split the group over here because this is one group which needs to be bitonic and this is the other group which needs to be bitonic so we are going to increase so the value should increase over here and the value should decrease over here the value should increase over here and the value should decrease over here cool that is basically how we need to set it up now uh, we will start comparing the elements so that we can actually figure out how this works. Now we are supposed to draw arrows, okay? We are supposed to draw arrows. Uh, actually, I already drawn arrows, but that is not the kind of arrows we need to draw. There was just illustrative. Uh, we need to draw arrows in such a way that we use the comparison distance in the case that we need to do them. So the arrows will be drawn like this. The comparison distance is one, so the length of the arrows will be one. So we start drawing an arrow from three uh, to seven. So that is the first arrow. This is the arrow of length one and it is drawn from left to right. Okay, it is drawn from left to right. Remember that. As this part of the group needs to be in the increasing order, the arrow points from left to right. Now, we would think that the next arrow would be need to be drawn from seven. But no, the next arrow will not be drawn from seven because that is illegal. Now, why is it illegal? Because multiple comparisons cannot be done on the same um, same elements simultaneously. It cannot be done. Uh, so because seven is already a part of an operation, the, the operation that seven is part of is with three and seven being compared. So you cannot create a new operation uh, which will compare seven and four, for example. No, seven is already part of an operation, so you need to move on. Um, so the next arrow will be drawn from uh, four to eight, but this arrow is a little different. This arrow will be pointing from right to left. The reason for this is that in this and this entire groups needs group needs to be bitonic, right? This entire group needs to be bitonic. So what happens is uh, you need to draw an draw an arrow from three to seven because you want those elements to be increasing, and you you need to draw an arrow from eight to four because you want those elements to be decreasing. That's it. That's how it's supposed to be. Uh, next, similarly, we do six to two and five to one. That is the, that that is the all. So you have the comparison distance. You get the comparison distance by taking half the value of the current bitonic sort, and then you draw arrows, and you don't mingle the arrow points, arrow endpoints with each other. That's it. Simple. We'll see more examples, and you'll get a better understanding of this. But yeah, that is how this basically works. So now we execute. So in execution, what happens is uh, is three three uh, in this this is in the correct order, right? 3 and 7 are in the correct order, so you go 3 and 7, you, you place them correctly. Now, is um, 4 and 8 in the correct direction? 4 and 8 is increasing from left to right, but you want them to increase from right to left. So, what you do is you swap them. So, this is being swapped because they are not in the correct direction. They're not in the direction that you need to be. So, it, the arrow, the direction the arrow points in, that, that is the direction in which the values of the elements should increase and that is not happening which is why you swap the elements so you swap them so you say eight and four now is of six and two in the correct direction no they are not uh, that's why you swap them too two and six are swapped also five and one they're not in the correct direction uh, so you basically swap them too so you get now these operations gave us the sequence three seven eight four two six and five one yeah, that is correct. Uh, this is the end of our first stage. So this is the end of our first stage. The stage, now the bitonic sort is composed of multiple stages and inside those stages there are multiple passes. Uh, passes are a subset of the stage itself. And a stage, uh, and, and, and you, as we talked about, you move from one stage to another by increasing the size of your bitonic sequence inside your main sequence. You might have observed that this stage had only one pass. So the reason for that was that um, now when you want to move on to the next pass, you have to decrease the size of your distance, comparison distance by half and then repeat the process. But in this case, our comparison distance was one. So now if we, if we like half that, we get a value of zero or, one, uh, zero or 0.5 truncated and uh, you can't really go forward. So that's why we ended that stage over there. 
But by because of that, we got our sequence, which has now two bitonic sequences of elements of, uh, of, of four elements each. So that was correct. Now we need to go to the next stage. Now stage two involves uh, progressing upwards uh, to form a larger bitonic sequence. The bitonic sequence that we need to form uh, when transitioning to a new stage is of size twice uh, or, or two times the size of your current bitonic sequence. So your current bitonic sequence, okay, this is four over here, by the way, I don't know why I wrote, wrote three, it's weird, but I wrote three over there for some reason. And uh, the existing bitonic sequence is of length four. So the next bitonic sequence that we need to create is of size uh, eight, right? Eight. So now the whole sequence contains uh, eight elements, right? The, our entire sequence is of eight elements. Uh, so we don't need to make any groups in this stage because you know we made two groups previously so in this stage we don't need to make any groups as our entire sequence is of size 8. Uh, the next step in the algorithm is to calculate the comparison distance. The next step in the algorithm is to calculate the comparison distance and the comparison distance again is half the length of your current bitonic sequence. Our current bitonic sequence is of length 4 so the comparison distance that we're going to have is of length ta -da -da, 2. So let's do that. So we're going to start drawing an arrow, right? We're going to draw an arrow. Uh, now this is our next, so you can eliminate this. So the current bitonic sequence that we have is of length four, right? So the next bitonic sequence that we need to generate is of size eight, which is double of four. So and our comparison distance in this case will be half of the current bitonic sequence, that is two. So the arrows that we'll be drawing are of length two and the entire sequence <coughs> Now the important thing here is that the entire sequence is supposed to be a bitonic sequence. So we don't need to make any groups. So four elements will be in the increasing part of the array and four elements will be in the decreasing part of the array. Again, for simplicity, we are halving the array, obviously. So this part over here will be in the increasing portion and this part over here will be in the decreasing portion of the array itself. So the way we draw our arrows are of length. Remember, this is the first pass, by the way the second stage and the first pass the first pass okay the first pass so the comparison distance is of length two remember that so we draw our, our arrows okay now this is the first arrow this is the second arrow they're in direction left to right they're in the left to right direction simply because this group is supposed to be in the increasing order now will we draw an arrow from eight no why because there are two reasons behind that first thing eight is already a part of an operation. Eight is already the part of an operation. If you see, eight is already a part of an operation. Plus, if you draw an arrow from eight to two, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? You are going to cross the boundary. You're going to cross the boundary. The boundary is not supposed to be crossed because if you cross, more specifically, cross comparison and swapping is not allowed. So you can't swap elements from the first part of the sequence and the second part. So you can't swap from the increasing portion and the decreasing portion. You can't swap those elements or you can't compare those elements, which is why it stops over here. Next, you draw an arrow from two to five, two to five, but that arrow points in this direction and then you draw an arrow from six to one and that, so that's it, that's it. So let's just see what elements will be swapped and what elements will not be swapped. So seven gets swapped with four because obviously they're not in the correct increasing order. Uh, and five uh, and two get swapped with five Two get swapped with five because they are not in the correct increasing order in the previous stage so so let's just write this down once so if three you write down seven is getting swapped by four so you had four over here and seven over here eight is right there uh two is getting swapped by five so we had five over here and two over here and you had near six and one that are in the correct order so you get the sequence three four eight seven five six two and one so, you know, what would happen is in the previous stage, we would have stopped, right? But the passes are not yet over. Uh, we cannot do that because this is not a bitonic sequence completely. This is the, the eight sequence, the eight elements are not a bitonic sequence. So we need to finish all of the passes in this stage to achieve that bitonic status. So um, how do you transition uh, to a new pass from the, it, from, from the current pass? So obviously, what you do is, as, as we discussed, you divide the current comparison distance by half. So the current comparison distance is a value of two. 
So you half it, and what you get is a value of one. So you basically compare one element. Now this is very simple. You compare three and four, eight and seven, six and five, and one and two. So why did this happen? This is where the increasing portion should be, and that is where the decreasing portion should be. So what you do is you have three and four, eight and seven, you cannot compare four and eight, so you can't draw an arrow from four and eight. Yeah, that's just how it works. So uh, what, what is going to be swapped and what is not going to be swapped? So eight and seven are getting swapped and five and six are getting swapped. So three and four are in the correct order. Eight and seven are getting swapped. Five and six are getting swapped and two, are one, uh, and, two and one are in the correct order. So now if you see, this is a bitonic sequence. You have the elements increasing three, four, seven, eight, and you have the values decreasing six, five, two, and one. Now we would like to move to the next pass in the stage, but the problem here is uh, the comparison distance is one. So if you have the comparison distance, what's going to happen is you're going to you're going to get values uh, of like zero or zero point five. You know, when you point five, you truncate the point five, you get zero, right? So there are no elements at a distance of zero from one another. So that is why you will not be able to move to the next pass. Um, cool. So yes, so that is the end of the stage. This is the end of our stage and this is the sequence we get at the end of stage two. Now, what is the length of the current bitonic sequence? So the length of the current bitonic sequence is eight, right? The length of the current bitonic sequence is eight. Now we need to create a bitonic sequence in the next stage of size 16 because you know the next bitonic sequence is double the current bitonic sequence the next bitonic sequence is of size 16 what is our comparison distance our comparison distance will be of size equal to 4 so that is the size of our comparison distance at this point so cd over here is 4 so i'm going to eliminate this part don't don't even i don't even care about that <laughs> so let's just say comparison distance is 4 so we should start drawing arrows now, moving on to the next stage, we find that the size of uh, the bitonic sequence that we need to form is 16. But you might be like, um, wait, the size of the whole sequence is 8. How can you form a bitonic sequence of size 16? My answer to this will be, don't. Don't. Uh, you just pretend to make a bitonic sequence of size 16. But while you're making the bitonic sequence of size 16, think about this you are going to sort the first the first eight elements and how many elements do you have eight <laughs> so the bigger bitonic sequences you create the more elements you're going to sort in increasing order from at, at, at the start and at, at a point what's going to happen is these elements are going to overlap the whole sequence and that's just how it works that's insane right that's crazy so so in your bitonic sequence of 16 elements the first eight elements are going to be sorted and that is the elements the eight elements that you already have so uh in the process you're gonna end up making so our comparison distance over here is of size four right so you're gonna create arrows of size four now the first eight elements need to be in the increasing order and the next eight elements need to be in the decreasing order but they don't exist so let's just concentrate on the increasing order so you have uh an arrow being drawn from three to six if you can calculate this is like four size four then four to five uh, seven to two and eight to one so the what elements are going to be swapped in this case so in this case seven gets swapped with two as you can see seven gets swapped with two because they are not in the correct order of increase and uh, also eight gets swapped with one because they are also not in the correct order of increase. So you have basically your elements being three, uh, four, seven is gone with two, so you have two, uh, eight is gone with one, so you have a, a one over here, you have six, you have five, and then you have two is being swapped, so you have seven over here, and this is being swapped, so you have eight over here. So these are your elements at the current moment. Next, what you do is you have to reduce the size of your comparison distance by half. So you reduce the comparison distance by half, which is two. You draw your arrows, which are like this, uh, like this, like this, and like this. Remember the rules that we followed, which is why we draw, draw these arrows in this manner. Next, you have the elements. Um, is this in the ascending order? No, it's not. So two and three get swapped. Is this in the ascending order? No. So one and four get swapped. Is this in the ascending order? Yes. Six and seven are maintained. Is this in the ascending order? Yes. So five and eight are maintained. 
Next, you half the whole thing again, half the comparison distance. Next comparison distance is one, right? So then, then you compare these elements, these elements, these elements, and these elements. You have one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that is the sorted elements. Now imagine this, this was crazy. This was crazy, right? So you got a sorted array and that is how the Bitonic sort works. Uh, imagine this, think about the rules, the stages and the passes. Passes are half of the comparison distance and you get the first comparison distance by halving the current Bitonic sequence. So that's it for this uh, part over here. Next, we will be taking a look at the code and how the code works. So thanks for watching guys. I will see you in the coding section. So the program starts execution from line number 38 over here where we define an array with our sequence. This is the same sequence that we had in our example. So the program starts execution from the definition of the array. Now the array contains the same values that we had taken as an example when discussing the workings of the algorithm. On the next line, immediately after, we have this line called array equal to the Bitonic sort function call, and that function call takes two arguments. Now the first one is a Boolean, and the second one is an array itself. So the return value of this function call is an array, you know, array, which uh, you might have figured out is uh, the, the, the returning sorted array, which we then, after which we then proceed to print out the array itself. Cool, cool. Now, uh, we need to see what the Bitonic sort function actually does with the parameters that we have passed it. What does true mean and what does array mean? So I click over here and go at the top. So the Bitonic sort is, uh, you know, the Bitonic sort function does the job of recursively splitting the array into smaller and smaller pieces and then calling the Bitonic merge function on the splits along with passing the direction that the values need to be sorted into. This is the same as what we saw in our example. The arguments which are put into the Bitonic sort are the direction and the array itself. If the direction is true, then the array is supposed to be sorted in the increasing order of values. And if the direction is false, then the array is supposed to be sorted in the decreasing order of values. So every recursive function contains a base case, as you all probably know, and this is our base case over here uh, for the Bitonic sort function. So uh, now, now if length of array is less than or equal to one, it means it has either one element or something, then you know the obvious condition is that we see that the length of the array is less, uh, is actually one in most cases, then it makes no sense to call the Bitonic merge function. There's no need to go into the whole process of calling the Bitonic sort function and call, calling the Bitonic merge function because these values will not really make any sense, which is why we just return the array over here and we go back. Else, now if the length of the array is greater than one, then you go into the else part, where you have the function called first equal to Bitonic sort. You recursively call the same function over and over again, uh, but this time when you pass it, when you call it, you basically pass in a value of true, and then you say you take the first part. Oh, sorry, yeah, you take the first part of the ar array and say that's the first, and then you take the second half of the array and that's basically the second. So that is what this means take the, the first part and pass it into the Bitonic sort as true and take the second part and pass it into the Bitonic sort as false. False for this like uh, decrementing or decreasing values and uh, sorry, decreasing values, not decrementing. Don't, don't use decrementing and then true, which is for increasing values. So yeah, did, do you see the similarities from the working examples that, that we have uh, had and, uh, and this one over here? It makes a lot of sense. So um, once that is done, you will end up with some uh, you know first and second values so first and second arrays and those first and second arrays need to be merged together the merging process involves comparison and direction Re remember that from our examples yeah it involves uh, merging involves directions and comparisons which is why you need to have a separate function for that called bitonic merge which takes in the first and second values it takes in the whole process with the direction and just does it with it but if you observe the direction being taken is only uh, one direction. Sorry, one direction, oh my God. Okay, direction, so direction, first plus second. Then you go into the, into the uh, Bitonic merge function call, which is over here, and you have these values over here. So you have if length is, uh, you know, less than one. Now, uh, uh, so the Bitonic merge function deals with driving the comparisons and recursively executes the passes of the current stage. So, 
pretty much Bitonic Merge is where you execute your passes and that is basically what happens over here. So if the length of array is equal to equal to one, return array. Now, you cannot merge a single element, hence we return that, uh, that you know, we return the array that contains that element itself. Uh, then you have the Bitonic Compare function. Now the Bitonic Compare function over here, you see over here, the Bitonic Compare function is what does the comparisons and sorts the arrays, um, you know, swaps the elements and everything according to the direction of the array that you pass it in. So if you pass in true, this array will be, you know, will significantly be uh, sorted or, you know, arranged in an increasing order depending on how much, you know, clutter there is. Uh, usually it just follows the algorithm as we saw in the example. So the Bitonic compare direction array, you have the distance. The distance, as we saw, is half the length of our uh, current Bitonic sort, which is half the length of the current array. That is the Bitonic sort we have. And for i in range of a dist, so basically i goes from the value of zero up to the value of distance. And then what you have is array of i is greater than array of i plus distance is equal to equal to direction. If this condition is you know equal to equal to the Boolean value of direction, true or false, then uh, they will be swapped. Now, why does this happen? So let me let me tell you exactly why. So if the direction is true, if direction is true, then the elements compared should be arranged in an increasing order, right? Because true means increasing. The condition below checks if the elements array of i is greater than the elements array of i plus distance. Dist. Now, imagine this. The value of distance is always going to be positive, right? Yeah, it's always going to be positive, which means that array of i plus distance always comes after consecutive after array of i. So if the direction is true and this condition is met, then it means that we need to swap, right? We need to swap as array of i cannot be greater than array of i plus distance. No, it cannot. It doesn't. It needs to be opposite. So when the increasing order values are in play, when you have this direction equal to true, they, they, this cannot work. So you need to swap. So that's why uh, we swap over here. If, now you think about this, if this was false, exactly the opposite would be tr would, would, would execute, right? In the descending order, so it still works. That's how this whole thing works, and I think you'll basically understand how it works anyway. So yeah, that's how the compare function works. Now after you compare, what happens is you need to recursively double down, so, which is why the Bitonic merge functions are called again and again. Bitonic merge function, you need to double down. Double down. What is this? What is doubling it down? Am I a guess? Take a guess. It's the passes. So this was the this is one pass. When it gets called again over here, it, it is another pass, another pass until until the length of the array is one, which means you don't have elements to compare with each other. Isn't that amazing? Yes, that is recursion at its best. That is how recursion works, and that is how this entire algorithm works. And I think uh, you would understand this, and I I think you understood this, and I think uh, you know you need to so. What I would recommend you do is, you know, actually take a piece of paper and execute this program one by one. Don't take a lot of elements. Take four elements. Do it with four. It's enough. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. And I'm actually very happy that you watched this video. So, thanks for watching, guys. Um, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I've been putting out a lot of videos. I want to put out a lot more. And uh, keep up with them. And thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one. Peace.